Hey, what's up, and welcome to Prenumble Passage. Uh, my name is Ryan Bowles. I'm the game's designer and developer. The goal of the video is to introduce this project, talk a little bit about the goals of the game, and then I'm going to show off a little bit of gameplay. The game is currently in active development. There are a lot of placeholder assets and a lot of design decisions still left to be made. Uh, Penumbral Passage is a single-player roguelike game inspired by Euro-style worker placement board games. Thematically, the world is covered in magical darkness, spooky, I know, and your goal as a player is to dispel that darkness by retrieving a magical amulet, classic, and returning it to your starting location. You control a party of characters, traveling in a caravan, not, like, not unlike Oregon Trail, and your caravan progresses steadily along a path. Each turn, you can place your workers down on tiles to acquire resources that will help you overcome some of the challenges presented along the way. Uh, also, you have to keep your party members fed and keep that torch lit. Some high-level goals for the project are present interesting and meaningful design decisions for the player as frequently as possible, so try to keep those decisions important and interesting. Uh, a single round of playtime is going to be around 30 to 45 minutes. Each time you play, the level will be procedurally generated and your party members will be different and um, you know, you have different access to spells and items and stuff like that. Pretty standard stuff. It's going to be turn-based gameplay. Uh, one of the goals of the project is to have a single screen user interface. I've mostly accomplished that. There are some prompts that pop up. Uh, and important for me, uh, I'm looking, always looking for a game that I can play while I'm drinking my coffee so the, that the game can be played comfortably with just a mouse. Also, we try to implement some emergent complexity and keep the output randomness as low as possible. So thanks for checking out Penumbral Passage, and we're going to get some gameplay going right away. So, <clears throat> as you can see, here's your caravan right here in the middle. Um, your party members are over here on the left inside your caravan. Here is on the right is your resources that you have access to, which is food, wood, coins, magic, and morale. Uh, this here is a um, hover over for the tiles and other elements in the game that you can investigate. Standard in turn button. Down here is a very simple quest log for now. Uh, right now, the game is asking us to collect wood, so that's our challenge currently. Um, and then over here is another static um, tooltip box so it works for elements on the left side of the screen so like your party members here we have this uh, flame themed guy who he currently illuminates neighbors and then this is our scroll themed party member he leaves a food token behind whenever he takes a tile uh, these are your spells they are not balanced at all right now but it's just trying to get the system in the game so currently we have access to three spells this one can light up a uh, scene tile, which is a scene tile right now are tiles that are dark but not completely illuminated. Um, and then this one can return a meeple to our caravan so we can use them again. And then this is a transformer revealed grass or crater tile, which there's definitely some grass here, uh, into a resource tile so we can transform these into something useful and that's a permanent effect. So we're gonna be moving along this path and then right now, uh, this ugly salmon color represents costs, and then white is gain. So, kind of a when we press this in turn button, what's going to happen is our cart's going to move down one square, and we're going to hit this cost of one wood, and that's to keep our torch lit thematically. So we need to get a wood this turn, and then the following turn we'll have to have two food to feed our guys, and then the following turn after that another wood to keep our torch lit again. And there'll be more stuff that pops up on the road as we progress, but this is just, you know, this is the first turn. So in the Fargo War, we can see these different tile types, but we can't actually place our guys on, on these over here. Um, we can only place our guys on ones that are lit by our torch, uh, which is located on our cart here. Um, this guy, he illuminates neighboring tiles, so when we place him down, you'll be able to see that you can now have access to these tiles for this turn. And so we'll place, we're actually gonna place this guy forward because what he does is he leaves a, he leaves a food token behind. So we got, we got one wood for taking that. This is berries, it's gonna give us some food. So now we have that one food token. So we place both our guys and there's nothing else we can do. Really this turn, I mean, we could return a guy, but 
that costs three magic and we don't want to invest that right now so we'll in turn move forward so we consume that wood from up here and um, we're just going to progress along like this so this guy popped up he's a, a mean old bandit so he has a variable cost so we get to him we can either choose to pay him off with one coin or you know charm him or, or blast him with magic it's up to the user's imagination how that works right now we also revealed a couple new tiles down here so this is a some mushrooms if we go here we get magic and food and then this is a book that you can study to get some more magic but your meeple is stuck stuck here for an additional turn which is indicated by this hourglass down here in the bottom right um, but we just need to make sure we got two food coming up here so since we left our food token here on this tile which, you know it's inconsistent right now it's yellow but whatever we can place a guy here to get uh, an additional food and then we're gonna need a wood coming up so we might look for that also so I'm gonna put this guy here and then this guy here and that'll give us a, the two food so we're still plus up some resources right now uh, this is a trading post so you can go here and trade either one food or one wood to gain one coin which is an option that we could do to pay for this bandit up here in the future Uh, I'm just going to kind of play, not thinking too much, because otherwise this video will take forever. And y'all don't want that. So let's see, we're going to need a wood next turn, so we'll spend the food here. And also we've got access to food with this guy. He's going to continuously be generating food for us over the course of the run. Okay, just going to keep getting some resources here. So we got our coin ready to pay this guy. Uh, let's see. I'm actually gonna take a wood here we're gonna need it in two turns and then I'm gonna go ahead and go here uh, using this guy on this tile can he leaves a food so it can just kind of end up being like a gold generator I might get a pair of wood um, so we can take this tile again spend our food get our wood back here this is a lake so you can go here and it gives you either or which is gives you some options Okay, so now we're going to run into this guy, and costs are immediately paid when we hit the tile, so um, we're going to have to pay this guy two food, one wood, and then either one coin or two magic. Um, I'm just going to pay him the coin. Here you go. Have some money. He beat us up. He took our money. And right, then we got a couple placeholder art here. Beautiful, I know. So this is a uh, day labor. You can go here and get a coin, but you got stuck here, kind of like the hourglass here. Um, this guy, he's a rambling hermit, and he uh, he has a star as his indication here, which means it's something unique. Um, so he's going to give us some clue about what might happen in the future. We also revealed this. Oh, that's a bug. We also revealed this beacon tile, which. Um, you can spend a wood here to light this up permanently and then what it'll do is it'll illuminate its adjacent tiles uh, forever so you'll have access to these even after your cart moves past them so you spend a turn and a resource to do it but it's pretty advantageous in some situations so let's see what do we need so we, we're flat out of food and wood we got wood coming up here i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to light up use my spell to light up this tile so that gives us uh, access to use it. I use two of our magic. Oh, we don't have the wood though. Tricked myself. We can save this maybe. Maybe not. Okay, well, we really punted that one. So this, this spell, it, it can turn this into a random resource tile. And right now resource tiles are um, these tiles with these green borders on them so maybe we get lucky here and get a wood oh look at us we're so good uh this this is currently got some definitely got some randomness to it i've been considering changing this to um kind of like a dice that turns every turn and so you would know which one you were going to get that turn and but each what which one you were going to get would be different each turn but you would know it before you cast it it's just a work in progress right there but anyways, never punished. So we get our wood. Then we can still take advantage that we lit this tile for this turn. And boom, 
that we lit up some tiles. So this also revealed some new tiles for us. So see, we were able to, you know, we took a little bit of risk. We were able to get out of that situation even after we committed to a bad decision. Now here's a coven. So you can spend one food here to get three magic, which can be strong. And then this tile gives you an item, which over here in your caravan, each of your meeples has one available item slot. Now we can spend two coins to either get a wood or, a, or get an axe or a scythe here. Uh, so given the axe to our guy would make forest tiles better for us and then getting a scythe would make these grass tiles useful in some way. So you could go to this grass tile and get uh, food from it. All right, so we're done with this turn. Oh, we still need to get this wood coming up. Oh, here's a gold mine showed up down here. So this is just better than day labor, but these spawn farther away from the roads are there. They're tougher to get to and, you know, you don't always have access to them like you. These might be more common. Here is an uh, orchard, so we can spend a coin here to get two food. And then this is a quest tile. It's the delicious honey. Uh, so right now it doesn't tell you what it does when you get there. Uh, I'm, I'm up in the air on whether or not I think that's important. And you get stuck here trying to get the honey for two turns. We'll figure out what this is for in a second. Um, so we need to get this wood though. That's got to be our top priority. So if we don't have this wood, we would spend this one morale. Right, right now morale is like this buffer resource that it kind of forgives you one resource on the road if you, if you don't have it. So if we're short of food or wood at one of these junctures, it'll burn our morale. And then if you have zero morale and you can't afford the cost, then that's game over right now. That's how you lose. So let's just go here, get this wood, boom. And we've got one more turn to talk to this hermit. I'm gonna take advantage. So the way this mushroom tile works is uh, it lights up from one further tile away. So if you light up an orthogonal tile, it'll also light up. So I'm gonna take advantage of that, get that magic and the food while we have a chance. So I would like to talk to this guy. He's going to give us some information about some upcoming challenge. Oh, but we do need two food. We got to be careful here. So he costs a food to use. We got uh, one food in the bank. Maybe we do this and we can do this. And then we can bring back a guy. This is like not super efficient, but YOLO. I'm gonna go talk to this guy. All right, so he says, beware of that bear. He has a real sweet tooth. So that's supposed to be a hint to the player. You need to get this honey for that bear coming up. He's gonna want that honey. All right, so in turn. All right. So we kind of used our magic there. So one of the tricks with these stuck tiles is you can return your guy uh, if you have the return spell and then you can, you know, bypass that disadvantage. But since we flubbed a few turns before, you know, let's see. We'll see if I can dig it. We can dig our way out of it. Oh, we need a wood coming up here too. It's getting pretty tight. Right now, the first half of the game is definitely trickier than just the way the balance is right now, but. All right, so this tile, I guess I haven't talked about him yet. This is when we get our third meeple. So he's gonna hop in the cart with this. Um, there's to currently five meeples available now that are in the game implemented. So we'll get one of the remaining three. So maybe that'll help us get out of our problematic situation we've, we've gotten here. And also we do have a chance here to light this beacon uh, maybe later and light this up. So. We may have a few more turns before that's a real problem. Um, let's see, we need some wood. Still got another turn, so I'm gonna keep uh, farming this. Well, no, this should lay it up. So I can go here and get a wood. Keep farming this magic tile. All right, let's see who we get. Oh, cool. All right, so we got this antler themed guy. He's originally druid themed. Now he's kind of deer themed. I don't know. We'll see. 
So the way this guy works is he blesses an adjacent resource tile, which I've called out here, berries, forest, mushroom, lake, gold, gold vein. Again, they're the ones with the green border. Uh, and he rotates every turn, actually. So I like this guy a lot. He can be really powerful, uh, but sometimes he just points at nothing and then you get frustrated, but that's the trade-off. So we'll, I'll show you how he works. So we can go here with this guy, uh, get our wood, because we're going to need wood for our wood challenge. So whenever we have a chance to take extra resource, wood's probably pretty good. Um, then we can get two magic and two food here by placing this guy here. He's going to light this tile up. And then boom, we take that. So we, we got the food from leaving it here last time with this guy. And then we also got an extra food uh, and an extra magic for taking the tile that this guy was pointing towards. So that was a good turn for us. Things are looking better. See, now he rotates. And so he always rotates in a clockwise direction right now. That's how he's implemented. Okay. So this guy has reared his ugly head. Definitely not a dragon. Shout out to Jacob. Um, he requires four coins and two magic. So he's kind of like the mini boss right now. Uh, so we have the magic, but we are short two coins. Luckily for us, we got some gold veins here. And we still need to we still need to navigate this, but we can see now that our road turns this way. So we're gonna have some more turns to get this honey still. I'm gonna use my uh, transformation spell again here. Maybe we can hit something good here. So I gave us a mushroom, so we can light this up. Let's think about it though. We do have some magic to spend. I want to be able to use this guy to point uh, to point to a tile. So the way he works, you have to place him first right now. So we could just get the extra food. So I can spend two magic to light this up. Let's do it like this. We will light this gold. Then we will put this guy here. He'll light up these tiles. Then we can set this guy here. So we can either decide, oh, we want this wood. So we can set him here. And then we can get two gold from this. So we actually got three gold that turn. It's pretty good. Map's kind of congested here, but. All right, we're, we're in the driver's seat now. We kind of like got past the, the early game definitely has like a hump you have to get over currently. I feel like we got over that hump. Now we can kind of spam, spam this section of the map to ramp up some coins. All right, so we're gonna land on this guy pay his cost he disappears we're still going to turn this corner we'll we'll be in good shape to hit this here um this is like a really resource rich area so we got pretty lucky here uh here's the flute um it's also it's like a counterpoint counterpart to the to the honey but um you can buy it for four coins or oh well, that's kind of a bad some badness there where it covers this up. This is going to get reworked though. Um, or you can spend, uh, trade your current item, which we don't have any yet, to uh, get it instead. I'm just going to keep taking some, some actions here. All right, so we can either, we can either use magic to, well, we only have two magic. So we need one more magic to be able to do the trick where we put our guy on the honey and then bounce him back. And then next turn is our last turn to, to use this beacon, so without having to use more spells. I'm actually gonna go for magic here. Then we can, so we have four magic. So we can bless, we can transform this tile. Boom. Put this guy here so he lights it up. Then we can put this guy here. So you'll see what the honey does. So when you get the honey, it's, it splooshes out uh, food all around it. So now put this guy here so he gets the food token from the honey. He also gets the food from the blessing. Then we can return this guy 
to the cart so we can avoid getting stuck here. And then we can get a wood and a food if we go here. Pretty good. Pretty solid. Alright, so coming up on the road, we gotta feed all three of our meeples. We gotta pay the one to keep our torch lit. And then we also have these uh, bandits with magic protection. Oh my, coming up. They're gonna cost four coins, which we have. We're, we're in good coin shape. Low on magic. We still gotta get a lot of wood. Maybe we'll actually buy an axe to kind of help us take care of that. But here's a, here's a place where we can get some wood. So we can place this guy here. Get a wood here, bless this one. And then this guy gets two wood, perfect. So we're gonna use three, three food, one wood. Uh, this is a cart upgrade. So you can spend three coins and three wood to get uh, an extra length on your cart, which will light up tiles further behind you right now. I don't know if we'll, we're gonna aim for this this round because we still, we got a bunch of wood left to get. And that's three wood. Um, let's see. Still low on magic. Is there any way we can utilize my blessing guy responsibly here? I don't think so. Hmm. We can do this, right? So go here. Pay that guy off and just kind of spam this L-shaped spot here. These three guys work well in the L, so. Pretty good. Now there's the bear. So he he's a big old boy, that bear. He wants that honey. So we know, because we talked to the guy, we know that he wants the honey. Sometimes he wants the flute, so that's that's the way that mechanic is working right now. Um, and if you don't have what he wants, he'll actually consume one of your guys. It's, uh, it's just placeholder, but maybe. Something has to happen. Okay. We might take advantage. Uh, it's fine. We might take advantage of this beacon here. We're going to waste our blessing, but lighting up some tree tiles here is going to be good for us in the long run. And game's not very uh, balanced right now, but that's fine. That's not important. We're just going to take some fast turns here to kind of finish this out. Maybe we'll buy this axe for fun. Who's a good axe user? Do this guy, right? Oh, so no, we can't actually buy it with him because we need we need him to have the honey to get past the bear. So we can buy it with this guy. Buy an axe and then it goes here. Very, very well drawn there. Beautiful. And then now when he takes a uh, forest style, we're going to get all kinds of wood. So now this one's going to give us three. So we have 18, should be 21, 22. Oh, we got one two so we got one from the axe one from the guy one from the blessing hmm, maybe it's doubling maybe that's a bug maybe not maybe that's intended so he's doubling the axe too i guess that's how that's working right now check that out somebody should let the somebody should let somebody know about that for sure all right here we go boom So here we kind of got into a situation where there's not a lot of <laughs> there's not a lot of terrain, and also we're at, we're stone cold out of magic basically. So so now we beat the bear. We could we could put this guy down here. Well, we could show we could do this, I guess. This scythe. It's not awful. So now he can take this grass. Get a food tile. Boom. And the last turn. Alright, so that's where you would get the amulet. And then 
what's going to happen is your guy turns around and you have to go back. And there's going to be some more interesting challenges on the way back. Um, and I think I'm going to implement some kind of upgrade system for either items or meeples here at this point where you can tweak your party, maybe get some new spells along the way for sure. But that's the gist of it. That's uh, Penumbral Passage in development. I started working on this in May. This is uh, currently the end of August. And the goal for the game is to be done around next May. So thanks for checking it out, and I hope you found something interesting that you enjoyed.